same question, which is what we will attempt to answer through this example, is what creates a good business opportunity from an innovation? Many people have great ideas, and some people have great ideas every day. But the proportion of good ideas that actually make it into a market opportunity, that actually make it to the market, and then are successful in the market, that is a very, very small proportion. So what, what makes it? So first of all, this is a, a very simple innovation. This is back from about 1980. Um, and this is, this is the initials of my friend, G.G. And he developed a very simple uh, working model for an air ionizer. And I'm going to describe what that does and what its benefits are. Uh, you get an idea of the size of the unit that's in, in the person's hand. That's the size of the unit that he developed. And each one of these is a small hole. And behind the hole is a, an electrode, and on that electrode there's very high electric potential, negative potential. And so his concept was very simple, the ideas are very simple, and he realized that there was an opening in the retail market for this type of product, for reasons which I'll describe. He developed in the prototype production model stage, and it went on to create a company with 60 people, and did very well. concept and what does it do? It was sold, oh, by the way, through mail order at that time very successfully and through some of the best known main high street brands uh, in Britain. And it went, went beyond the UK as well. And he, he named it Mountain Breeze uh, for reasons we'll see in a moment. So what, what does this technology do? Um, there's a, a phenomenon, how many of you have a background in electrical engineering? Or, no? You'll know if you have a, a needle shape, so you've got a, um, a singularity and you've got a high electric potential, the, 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 uh, the gradient of the electric field will be maximum around the, the needle point. And if you increase the voltage substantially enough, you actually get a discharge. If it's a negative polarity, you'll get a discharge of electrons called a corona discharge from the point of the needle. This then gets into the air through those small apertures that we saw in, in the front of the uh, old device. And these negative ions attach themselves to molecules in the air. So you get negatively ionized air uh, in the room or the space in which this is placed. This is designed, the model I just showed you, is designed for a smallish room, a few meters by a few meters. He then went on to develop other models which would be adequate enough for spaces this size for commercial and industrial areas. He was boosted by having fans as well. So, why do this? Um, because if you, the reason we call it mountain breeze, is that if you go to altitudes of 1500 to 2000 meters, you feel not that the air feels fresh. It may be the same temperature as on another occasion lower down, but the air feels very fresh, you feel invigorated, the mind feels clear. And that's because typically air at that altitude is negatively ionized air. The contrast to that is where you've got a thunderstorm, you feel very heavy before the storm comes, the mind feels dull, uh, you feel lethargic. Air typically is very high positive charge before a thunderstorm. One of the reasons you feel refreshed after a thunderstorm is not only that it rains, but the electric discharge of the lightning has actually removed that strong positive polarity from the air at ground level. And it's been Switzerland for a while, and um, there's a very interesting wind that blows from the south in Switzerland and southern Germany. It's called the Thurm, and they use the same word for hair dryer, interestingly, in Germany. And the fern comes from the Sahara at very high altitudes. If you're south of the Alps in uh, southern Switzerland and northern Italy, you don't actually experience the wind. But the aerofoil effect of the Alps draws the wind down into the valleys on the northern side. And it's warm air, but it's it has a positive charge. And in the wintertime, uh, 
uh, if we're in that part of the system, the temperature can go up from zero to 20 degrees within about half an hour, which can be quite devastating for anyone who might be on steam that day. But it's a very interesting phenomenon because since the air has a strong positive charge, people's behavior changes. Uh, car accidents go up, domestic disputes go up during those times, and it's actually a well-documented, confirmed effect. People's behavior changes quite dramatically. Then it rains, the wind goes away, people feel what a relief. I've been in that. It sometimes lasts for about three days. You really feel very heavy and you can't think properly. So the whole principle behind the air ionizing actually means Category, uh, category that we, who we, uh, 
uh, it was uh, like liked by people who wanted to play games majorly and uh, use it for a purpose. But since cell phones have a wide usage, now uh, the touch screens have come into play. So that is the major reason it failed because it is very revolutionizing the uh, industry. And uh, another another three points that I like to add. <laughs> so first of all, uh, being a mobile industry is very dynamic. So they came up with a joystick thing, but uh, it was soon over, soon take over uh, by the small small functionality which uh, which came, and it was better, very much efficient and better to use as compared to the joystick. So that was uh, one of the points that I feel uh, that they were not able to sustain. Then secondly, the joystick I had personally used uh, those phones. Uh, another problem was a lot of dust and uh, that uh, a lot of particles got through those key packs. So it was actually a lot of defective ones. And uh, there were a lot of problems when they actually usually stopped working. And when, when you, the precision was not accurate, when you threw left or right, or up or down, they were not that accurate. So I think that was another reason uh, for them uh, for uh, them to not sustain in the market for so long. And uh, yes, uh, the third was the one. Your point you brought out, I'm glad we went to the uh, You brought out the point that people would buy a mobile phone not necessarily only for its functionality, it's a safety symbol as well. Whereas the ionizer, no one's going to see it anyway because it's stuck in your room at home. So those sort of trendy elements about it are not so important, apart from the fact that it is a constant product. That's a, that's a very good point. Do we have another group at the back here, or have we had every group? The main reason what I was looking for is that the air dinosaur was basically an embedded in product. It was not dependent on something else. Whereas the joystick, it was basically uh, there was a software uh, component attached to it, which uh, there was a uh, compatibility issue when it came to you know integrating the software with uh, the software of other uh, uh, mobile manufacturing uh, 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 other mobile apps. So basically, one was uh, because of this incompatibility, the, uh, the joystick uh, product failed. And the second was uh, is that software is a very uh, fast evolving market. Uh, technology changes very rapidly. So that is one of the key factors why probably this thing failed. So, no. this is a good point. Um, other groups are focused on the fact that hardware evolves quickly. You go from joystick to, uh, to scrolling and you have touch screens. That's all evolved very, very quickly. But also the software behind any particular bit of technology is also evolving quickly behind the scenes that you may not be specifically aware of. That's great. Um, that very, I, I put over a few points uh, in advance and I think you've really covered very comprehensively all the points. The other interesting thing, and this is where it comes down to what I'm sure it's going to be your practical experience from time to time, is uh, this friend of mine, uh, Mr. G.G., also called Jeffrey, interestingly, he, he was a very, very creative individual, still is a very creative individual, always coming up with ideas. And I think in his own mind there was some sort of professional ego that the product that had done very well was not one which was actually a very intelligent product. So I think he thought, I want to really make my name with a technological innovation that is more intelligent, that has, it's smarter, it has more to it. But he didn't really think through, and his colleagues didn't regard him from the fact that just because it was technologically more clever, it didn't necessarily mean that from a business proposition point of view, it was going to work. And that, of course, is what actually happened. So um, I hope you found that an interesting study. I, when I was thinking of what would be useful to go through, this just came into my mind as something where you've got the same team of people, you've got the same main inventor, uh, you've got the same sort of opportunities around you, but a good choice or a bad choice. And it really was the, had they done carefully their analysis at the beginning, then some of the points that you brought out, and you've only been thinking about this for 20 minutes, and you've, you've really brought out actually the key points about why it didn't work. So you don't be think that they probably didn't sit down and do this. They thought, this is a great idea. We did very well before, we'll ride on the wave, and we'll, we'll do it again. So let's have the attendance sheet.